if you've ever had a go at playing retro computer games, you'll know that the keyboard controls can be, well, let's say, just a little bit tricky. So there has to be an easier way. So let's find out. Hi, and welcome back to Bytes and Bits. If you've been having a play around with the Fuse ZX Spectrum emulator, you'll know that some of the games, the, the key combinations to control your game are a little bit hit and miss sometimes. Um, if you've only got um, left, right, up, down and fire, that's not so bad. That's only sort of five fingers. But once you start to get some of the games, you know, your, your hands spreading out all over that keyboard and it's, it's a real pain to try and get that player moving around the screen. So there must be a better way. And of course, back in the day, um, there were joysticks that you could plug in. So let's have a go and see if we can get some of those working with our modern game pads. So we're going to use a game called Lunar Jetman to have a go at that. And that's the one that was shown at the very start of the video here. So if we have a look, um, when you when you do use a game in the in the ZX Spectrum Fuse emulator, um, it's always handy to go and have a look at the instructions for it. And again, if you just search online, you, you'll find lots of websites that sort of tell you what keys to use. So for Lunar Jetman then, we've basically got to our, our left and right keys, um, which we're going to use our, our C and our X for that. We then have a laser button to fire. So that's basically the middle row of letters on your keyboard. The top row of letters then is your um, turn on the jetpack to make you fly upwards. But we then have some extra keys for this particular game where we have to be able to pick up and drop items. We also have to be able to jump into and out of vehicles and objects. And there is then a hover button um, as well. So there's quite a few keys to get going here. And if, if we look at the actual keyboard itself then, you'll see that they are sort of fairly well chosen. So our, our up will be anything along here. So we could use P and L for our, our up button and our fire button. Then our X and C are our left and right. Our Z is taking us to pick up objects. Then either symbol shift or space are to jump in and out of, of um, our, our vehicles and so on. So they are fairly intuitive, but there just are a hell of a lot of fingers to start remembering what they do. And that does make some of these games quite hard to play, especially at the beginning, or if you're just jumping in and out of games um, here and there, then it's, it's, it's not something which is easy to pick up straight away. So if, if we could get our game pad to mimic a lot of these keys, so all of our, our movement keys, our left, right, our thrust up and our hover will, will be um, on our joypad. Then we can have our fire button, obviously, and then a button to cut, pick up and drop objects and a button to jump into um, our vehicles. So that would all then just mean we have our joypad and then three buttons on top of that. And that's fairly standard then for one of the games we use these days. So let's have a look at how we can set that up. So I'm going to be using just a standard Xbox controller for this project. Um, but any, any sort of joypad that you plug into your PC should be able to hook into our Fuse emulator. But let's have a look at these settings then to get that going. So setting it up in Fuse is actually quite straightforward, if not obvious. So we need to go into our options menu. And then if we go to our peripherals and general peripherals, we need to tell Fuse that we want to plug in a joystick. Now there's a number of different joysticks that you can use. And you can see here on the um, Lunar Jetman uh, game, we actually then rec it recognizes both a Kempston and a Cursor joystick. And those are two of the main ones that people had um, on the static spectrum. So we're gonna emulate a Kempston joystick. So we've, we've turned it on now in the general peripherals. But we now need to make sure that it knows to use our keypad, our, our, our gamepad as that joystick. So we go to our options and joysticks and joystick number one, we're going to say that that is our Kempston joystick. 
So we should now have it connected up just as a simple joystick. You can see here there's lots of other options we can set, but we should now be able to control the up, down, left, right, and fire using our joystick. So if I click on OK for that, and if we then click on, if we then select, we're using the four to get to our joystick, we should now be able to start the game and have that um, play. So on the Xbox then, it's not the D-pad that this connects up to, but the actual left-hand joystick. So the left-hand joystick and the A button, the A button is your button number one. Those will become your fire button. So if I go into and play the game six, we should now find that I can move around, I can fire, and I now have my my joypad actually controlling my player. And, and that is, again, much, much easier. But we now have to think about those extra keys that we had inside our game. We need to those, map those into our controller as well. And of course, th these are non-standard keys. So let me just come back out of, let me just um, pause that for a second. So I reset that, okay. So, Let's have a look at how we do this. So the first thing to do is we need to work out which button is which on our game controller. So if you're on a Windows computer, you need to press your Windows button and then look for control panel. So we type in control panel. You should find that comes up. And this is what we have here. Um, and we want to go into our devices and printers. And you should then see your game controller listed on there. So if you right click on that, we should then go to game controller settings. And this will bring up a little dialog box. And if we go to the properties then, we're able to see which buttons we're pressing. So really what you want to do here is on my, on my controllers, if I press the A button, you can see that that comes up, um, number one is highlighted in the buttons area. If I press my B button, that should be number two. My X button is number three, and my Y button is number four. But again, I can then look at the other buttons on that. So my, my right shoulder button is number six, left shoulder button is number five, and, and so on. So we can get a hang of, of which buttons are which. But the ones we're gonna be using for this then, we're gonna map our A, B, X, and Y buttons. Okay, so let's cancel out from that. And if we now go back into our options and our joysticks and joystick one, we can map these new buttons into our um, gamepad buttons. So we said that our button number one, so as our A button is going to be our fire button. Button number two, I'm going to use that for the picking up objects, which was our Z key. So I'm just mapping it here. I'm just choosing our Z key. And button number three, instead of the joystick fire, that's going to be our jump into um, our object, so we want that to actually be our cap shift button. So that maps it to that. So button number one is mapped to our joystick fire, button number two is mapped to our keyboard Z key, and button number three, our X button, is mapped to our cap shift key on the keypad. So that should now give us then full control of our game. So if we load back in our Lunar Jetman, so let's go back to Lunar Jetman and open that up. So there we have our game. Again, we select our Kempston joystick, and we should now, if I get my controller, we should be able to play the full game. So again, our movement keys on there, and I should be able to, if I come over here, I should be able to, if I can get down there, pick up that bomb, drop it on there, come back over here, then jump into my car, and I need to go this way. So again, Lunar Jetman is actually a really good game. It's an incredibly hard game, especially when you have these little holes which you can't drive over. So I have to jump out of my car, pick up, oh, and there we're dead. But you get the idea. So we've now got the game working correctly and using our joypads so we can do all of our movements and map our keys. So that's just a quick tutorial then on getting it set up. So let's come out of that. Let's do a machine and our reset, okay. So we're using the standalone version of Fuse.
Uh, and once you set up the options, you can then, if you come down to the bottom, you can save that. So that will actually save our current set of options. So it will now know that we want to connect one of our joysticks in as a Kempston joystick, and we've mapped it then to this um, set of buttons for Lunar Jetman. Obviously, if we then want to play a different game, we're going to have to come in here to our options, joysticks, and then set up the new mapping on our joystick. But that then should let us control really any game we want. So again, um, our, again, as long as that game does accept a Kempston or a cursor joystick, or at least one of the ones which is supported here in, in our peripherals section. Okay, so if, if you are using Fuse then through something like RetroPie or, or one of the Libretto cores or RetroArch, then there is a different set of options you have to do. But again, I tend to prefer to use it through a standalone Fuse because I do have, you do seem to have many more um, options as to how you set up your game and how you set up your machine. But anyway, that's using a joystick with Fuse, um, and I hope that improves your gaming experience when you play your fantastic retro Spectrum games. Okay, see you soon. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.